those gold medals must feel magnificent. They're really heavy, <laughs> actually, but yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true. It's something that you dream of when you first start playing hockey and to actually to have one around my neck crown now is quite unbelievable. You're yeah. the same. It was the most absolutely magical three weeks we have ever had. And I think one of the most special things is that so many people spoke around how we came across um, that we're really together as a team and it was the best team effort I've ever been a part of and as Holly said, an absolute dream come true to come home with this. Is it true as a team you used to go to breakfast together, there was never a time that you two, you, all of you, the whole team weren't together? Yeah, absolutely. I think as a, as a group before, um, we decided that actually we wanted to make sure we were really tight as a unit the whole time. So we went to every single meal time together. Um, we didn't spend much time apart. Um, apart and from going to the bathroom. <laughs> apart from obviously going to the bathroom. Um, and we made lots of decisions as a team to make sure we could just stay in our bubble and focus. So we came off of social media. So to come home and see the support we had was, is just almost completely unbelievable. Well, two of those things I want to talk to you about, actually, coming home on the aircraft, of course. We've now seen all the pictures. So is that true? Did the hockey cabin nail all those 70 bottles no, of champagne? No, it's not true. <laughs> um, we were just high on life rather than anything else. We were just so excited and it was just amazing to be on there. And, and the cabin crew and everyone on there was just unbelievable, like, so happy and excited. And we were excited. Yeah, so. it, and that's what they were saying special, as well. But the first, I think the first... Two hours was quite noisy, and then we had a good old sleep. Yeah. Oh, you probably deserved it after <laughs> all of that. Uh, now, you were saying that you came off social media. I'm fascinated by that. That was each of you. Who made that decision? Well, we all, um, before we went over to Rio, we all sat in a room at Bisham and, and discussed the whole subject, and it was quite a lengthy subject. Um, the whole team contributed, and we went through the pros and cons of being on social media whilst at the Olympic Games. And um, there was quite a number in our group who had previously been to an Olympics, like Alex, and they all gave their experiences of being Olympics and being on social media. And as a group, we decided that we were going to go off social media during the Olympics, so that we were just solely focused on what job we had to do whilst we were there. Um, and then, obviously, after the final, we, it was just amazing to go on social media and just see that all the, the Did you see the messages. Love? Yeah, it was it, it incredible. It was absolutely incredible. The, the main driving force behind our decision was we, we love our sport, we want the nation to love our sport, we want people to get involved. And we felt the best way we could do that was to try and win the Olympics and focus solely on that. So now, when we, when we did win, and it's absolutely a dream come true, to have messages saying we're joining a new hockey club or we've got Hockey Fest going on all around the country at the moment and we want to get young people, old people, anybody along to just pick up a stick and have a go. How wonderful. I tried this morning, that's it. I want to do it. I actually really do. I'd love to go and play. Um, that moment, though, that penalty, oh, goodness me. <laughs> were, were you feeling as we all were at home? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was quite surreal. Um, I was kind of just in a little bubble, and so the five, five of us that take uh, the shuffles were so all together. And it was really surreal in that moment where I think I was just, I was just blocking what the occasion was and the moment was out. And then, really? You were able to do that? Yeah, we've done quite a lot of work back um, at Bishop Abbey where we train with both coaching staff, all the other players, all our goalies and psychologists about, um, about all our processes and how we take them. And so, in that moment, I just pretended I was, I was at Bisham training and I knew exactly what I was going to do. Wow. Um, and so, actually, thinking back, I, I don't understand how I wasn't nervous, but I think it was just all the preparation and planning. Were you nervous watching? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think we, we were obviously next to Holly before she walked, walked to take her penalty, and a couple of us kind of whispered, if she wins... If she wins, that's it. If she, if she gets in, we win. And then we kind of said, shh, don't make sure she doesn't know. Make sure she <laughs> doesn't know. And you couldn't know. hear them saying that? No, but I was aware of the situ <laughs> situation at the time. Um, so, yeah, I just knew what my job was at that point in time. And then, yeah, I just went and executed it. <laughs> I, we all went completely mad. I have to admit, I haven't really watched hockey before, and I became... I just couldn't move. And, and also, we've never won penalty shootouts in the other game that we won't mention. We don't do very well in that. So when a penalty shootout was happening, honestly, I can't tell you, we were all there with you. It was incredible. And also, uh, you know, being able to stop all the other ones coming in and as a team, you were so tight. I think that's completely spot on. I think we knew when we went to the Olympic Games, we believed, we believed we could win, but we knew we all had to bring our A game, every single one of us. And the most special thing about the whole Olympics was every single player brought their A game. We were so tight together. We stuck to our jobs. We, we knew what we had to deliver. So when we kind of 
stood up on that podium and heard our national anthem, it was, it was the most amazing moment I've ever felt. And it was just looking at one another, knowing we'd done it, but we'd done it to represent 31. There's, there's 31 of us in our squad. And so we were stood on the podium with every single one of them in our minds, oh. knowing that the work had been done back home and that's what had won us the medal um, when we were out there. And one of you's getting married. Yes, next year, <laughs> next yeah. September. Yeah. So now, can you sit back, relax, and get a dress and not um, worry about the hockey so much? I've got a little so bit of time now. So um, we got engaged last year, um, but I remember saying at the time, I don't want to sort of think about anything or try and get too heavily involved in the planning until after the Olympics, because this year was that was our focus. So. Um, Venue's booked. Um, and and you've really got lots of bridesmaids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. um, the guest list is going to be huge with um, all, the guys, all these guys there. But um, yeah, I can't wait to start get planning that now. Well, good luck with that. And again, and I know I've said it to the Olympians this week, and I really mean it from all of us. We are so proud. It's fantastic. Congratulations on your gold medals. If you'd like to see even more great guests, then click here. There are plenty more fantastic interviews to come, so make sure that you subscribe. We just flew back economy, so we just sort of going to get on the plane as normal, and they were like, all the GB gold medalists off first, please. And I was just sort of casually sat waiting, thinking I'll get my stuff out of the locker when everyone else has got off. But I had to get off first, and then someone took all our luggage off, and then there was all this media waiting outside, and they were taking photos as I went off in the car with Dan, my husband. So um, that was all a little bit surreal.